You're listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Greetings, fellow travelers through the liturgical year. This is Lisa Davis. Welcome to another Feast Day Quick Take. Today's feast on the liturgical calendar marks one of the great escapes in history, an escape that became a certain kind of pilgrimage and a series of pilgrimages in the life of the Holy Family. Defined in my trusty, dusty old dictionary as long journeys or searches, especially ones of exalted purpose or moral significance, pilgrimages grew up in the footsteps of Abraham and Moses, making long hikes not only an important factor in Jewish religious custom, but also just a necessary fact of life. If you think of the many journeys in the life of Christ as holy quests, little Jesus had already completed the very first pilgrimage of the New Testament before he was three years old, when he was taken out of Judea by St. Joseph and the Blessed Mother in what is now known as the flight into Egypt. I remember being distinctly disappointed as a child to find out that the flight into Egypt had nothing to do with flying. The Holy Family didn't levitate like St. Joseph of Cupertino and wing it to the pyramids. On the contrary, it was a long, slow plod that would have taken at least a week. There were no planes, trains, or automobiles, and God did not provide a miracle to move the Holy Family all those miles. When God charged St. Joseph in a dream to make haste in removing the Christ child from the treachery of Herod, the Holy Family had no choice but to strap on their sandals and walk to pack up their few meager belongings, wrap up baby Jesus, and slip out into the dark of night with murderous Roman soldiers hot on their trail. Such perfect faith and obedience to the will of God to have done such a thing. Imagine how we would flinch at doing such a thing if it meant we were having to pack up a car and make haste to Egypt. But there were no climate-controlled minivans for the Holy Family. It's possible they had a small pack animal, but the donkey we're used to seeing in many of the images of the Nativity story was probably used more for carrying supplies and bedding than for carrying the Holy Family themselves. This is a point that historians of this era agree upon. If they owned a donkey at all, it would have been a small one, and it would have been spared any long distances carrying the weight of a person, a practicality that would not have been considered strange at all to the Blessed Mother. She would not have been offended the people of ancient Judea were accustomed to walking. There is an extraordinary man named Arthur Blessett, who became so fascinated with the day-to-day realities of the Holy Family's travels that he made it his life's goal to find and walk the actual paths that they would most likely have taken based on biblical accounts. Using Blessett's data, here's the record of Our Lady's likely travels. The Blessed Mother would probably have been carried to Jerusalem until she was around three years of age. She would have walked from Nazareth to Jerusalem and back at least once a year after that, until about the age of 20. The distance was about 120 miles each way, making each round trip equal to 240 miles. This journey, made 17 times, would have equaled 4,080 miles, or about 6,565 kilometers. You can picture the trek from Nazareth to Jerusalem as walking roughly the distance from Des Moines, Iowa to Omaha, Nebraska, or from Phoenix to Tucson, Arizona, or from Brussels, Belgium to Cologne, Germany, and back once a year. At the time of the visitation, Our Lady walked from Nazareth to a village south of Jerusalem, where Elizabeth, her cousin, was pregnant with St. John the Baptist. This was a distance of about 130 miles. She then walked back to Nazareth, another 130 miles. Then, with St. Joseph, she traveled on foot to Bethlehem, which was also roughly 130 to 150 miles on foot. During all this walking, around 390 miles, or 627 kilometers, Mary was with child. Once again, for perspective, 130 miles is roughly the distance between Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia, or Rathdrum, Idaho, and the Canadian border, or from London, England, to the Welsh border. Imagine walking that round trip twice while pregnant. It's believed that the Holy Family stayed in Bethlehem for about two years after the birth of Christ. In that time, little Jesus was taken at least twice to the temple in Jerusalem by Mary and Joseph, once for the circumcision, six days after his birth, and then again for his presentation in the temple, 40 days after the nativity. 
It's estimated that these two visits to Jerusalem, 130 miles each way, added up to a total of 520 miles. With Herod, the king, seeking to kill Jesus, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph, and he was told to flee to Egypt, where the Holy Family lived, until the death of Herod. Then St. Joseph was told again in a dream to return to Israel, and so they came to live in Nazareth. How far was this journey? The estimated mileage from Bethlehem down to the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, through Gaza, across the Sinai Desert, and into Egypt to the pyramids pyramids along the Nile, would be about 350 miles, or a 563-kilometer walk for the Holy Family, followed by 350 miles on the return trip, plus roughly 10 to 25 more to make it back to Nazareth. This is roughly the equivalent of a walk from Boston to Philadelphia, or from Cincinnati, Ohio to Chattanooga, Tennessee, or from Munich to Bologna, with a toddler, and then back again all the way to Nazareth, an extra 50 miles or so with a four or five year old. During the hidden childhood of Jesus, when the Holy Family lived in Nazareth, Mary and the company of St. Joseph and Jesus would have gone at least once a year to the temple in Jerusalem and back again, as was the custom at this time for all faithful Jews. These trips would have been taken at Passover and at least one of the other temple festivals of the year. We know our Lord began his public ministry at about the age of 30, and the Holy Family went home to Nazareth from Egypt when Jesus was about five. So for four twenty-five years, the Blessed Mother would have made round trips to and from Jerusalem once a year, walking 240 miles, or 386 kilometers, round trip from Jerusalem to Nazareth, Nazareth to Jerusalem. This would have equaled 6,000 miles, or 9,655 kilometers. Though we don't know for sure how often or how far she traveled during the three years of Jesus' public ministry, we do know through the scriptures that Our Lady attended the wedding in Cana with Jesus, and that she was present in Capernaum, that she would have traveled from Nazareth to Jerusalem for the Passover each of these three years, and that she stood at the foot of the cross at our Lord's crucifixion in Jerusalem. We can estimate the miles of Mary's walking during this time at around 912. So let's do the math. Our Blessed Mother walked 4,080 miles from Nazareth to Jerusalem before the Annunciation, 390 miles while with child, 520 miles from Bethlehem to Jerusalem twice, 350 miles from Bethlehem to Egypt, 400 miles from Egypt to Nazareth, 6,000 miles from the time Jesus was five years old until he was 30, and a possible 912 miles during the public ministry of Jesus. This all amounts to 12,652 miles, or about 20,361 kilometers, that Our Lady walked by the time she was 50 years old. For perspective, note that the distance around the world of the equator is roughly 24,901 miles, or 40,074 kilometers, which means that during her lifetime, Mary, the Mother of God, walked at least half the distance around the world. And she makes that walk again with us every time we pray the rosary. If you think of every rosary as a pilgrimage through the life of Christ, our Blessed Mother has circumnavigated the globe thousands of times, maybe millions. She's set foot in every corner of the earth, taking these walks with millions of Catholics over these many centuries. Think of it. We keep her company on her journey. She keeps us company on ours. Don't miss your daily walk with Jesus' mom. This is Lisa, signing off. You've been listening to the Catholic Family Podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and family. You can support the production on Patreon and PayPal, and you can reach Kevin at kevin89davis at gmail.com. Ad maiorem de gloriam. All for the greater glory of God.